long time and in fact was ordained minister there when she served as part of the pastoral team. She has since served as interim pastor at the Victoria Road United Baptist Church, but is now at Chester United Baptist Church. Did you say today was the first time? That's right. So she just went over and mother just in at Baptist Church. But we're glad to welcome her to this pulpit and to minister to us in the course of this evening. So may I invite you to come forward? Oh, yeah. What's the, what's the, what's the problem with me? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Before Reverend Sheila comes and we pray, the choir of wisdom. So we pray 
that you who are in the page of these sacred writings will come through to each one of us. And so be pleased in superior measures to our small pride to grant us this plea for the sake of your dear Son, our great God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Good evening, people of God. I bring you greetings from Chester United Baptist Church. I thank you all very much for inviting me this evening to come and share the word of God with you. As I sat there, I was waiting for the anointing of the Spirit because I have learned that it doesn't matter how much I study, if the Spirit doesn't come, it's very dry. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I was waiting and it, it came through your last song, I, I want Jesus to walk with me. The three scriptures that we just heard, that's the scripture in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11, um, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, and 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 9 to 12, all have one commonality. In all three scriptures, we see the weaknesses of humanity and the greatness of God. It is very, very easy as people of faith to get caught up in the bus and to get caught up in, in the euphoria because there, there can be a euphoria in the worship of God. And sometimes we try to outdo each other with our spiritual gifts. We're not the only ones. In actual fact, the church in Corinth had the same issue. The church in Corinth was a highly dysfunctional church. This was a church which Paul had founded during his second missionary journey. The church had all kinds of issues in it. This was a church in which a man was sleeping with his father's wife. That was number one. People were taking each other to court. As believers, they would not settle their disputes uh, in church. They would take each other to court, number two. Number three, there were all kinds of arguments about spiritual gifts. And if you would recollect, 1 Corinthians 13 tells us about the importance of love. Paul had had enough of them. These were people who were talking about speaking in tongues and prophesying and doing, doing all the wonderful charismatic things. And yet still, their hearts were not right. There were so many schisms in the church in Corinth to the extent that some of them said, well, we follow Christ. And some said, we follow Cephas, that's Paul. As uh, uh, Peter, and some said we follow Paul. So this was a church that had all kinds of division in it. It was not an easy church. And isn't it wonderful to know that humanity hasn't changed? We are still the same. Put, put a number of people together in one place, and there's a lot of politics. Some follow this person, and some follow that person, and, and some can't stand this person, and it's the same. Yes, when we become real with God, then God will be real with us. Amen. If we put on phoniness, and if we pretend that we are something that we are not, then God is simply watching us. But when we become who we are, when we go to God, we are. And we say to God, Father, we are just a falling people saved by grace. Amen. There is no righteousness in us except the righteousness that Jesus brings. 
then God is able to help us. On, on the cross, there were two thieves. One to the right and one to the left. The thief who was able to say, Lord, remember me when you come into your glory. Was the one that Jesus saved. Listen, there is no righteousness in us. We are a fallen people. Our strength, our hope is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. If you don't get anything out of what I'm saying this evening, hold on to that. I want to walk with Jesus. That is our only hope. That is our only confidence. And from this time forward, do not be afraid of your weaknesses. Paul, Paul said, I will boast in my infirmities so that Christ may be glorified. Let us, let us stop trying to be super spiritual. Let us stop trying to be what we are not. Let us be just God's special people. People with weaknesses, people with difficulties, people with struggles, but people who have a powerful Savior, people who have a mighty God. That's all God requires. Because if the truth be told, none of us here is righteous. If you understand the meaning of sin, then you will understand what it is. To sin is to miss it. And it's, it's, it's a, a metaphor that was used with Marcus. Mark's men would shoot. And if you miss it, even if you miss it by one centimeter, you have missed it. At the end of the day, my strength may be your weaknesses. But your weaknesses may be my strength. You know, it's strange. What I'm trying to say is sometimes we, we look at each other and we, we, we come up with a measuring stick. Because, because you don't have my weakness, it may make you feel good about yourself. But what if you discover that your weaknesses were my strengths? We need each other. Amen. We need each other. More than ever, we need each other. In a church like this, we need to love one another. We need to look for each other. I don't know anything about this church. And your pastor has not said anything to me about this church. Nothing whatsoever. I just received a notice. He asked me if I'd like to come and preach. And I said I would. I don't know anything about this church. But as I sat down and I... I was listening to the to the clan read the names. And, and, and it felt like, where, where are God's people? Where are God's people? They belong here. They belong in the house of the Lord. Where are they? Why aren't they here? my brother's keeper? That's what Cain said. Am I my brother's keeper? People of God, we belong to one another. We are each other's keepers. If you don't see your brother or sister in the house of the Lord, go searching for them. Bring them back. Because the good shepherd leaves 99 and he goes after the one. Let us this day just think of one person who used to be here and who isn't here anymore and go searching for that person. Jesus as the good shepherd isn't here anymore. But we are all his under shepherds. Amen. The Lord is relying on us. He's relying on us. We keep on saying, when is Jesus coming back? The world is so terrible. When is he coming? When is he coming? He's not coming because we haven't done our work. Where are our brothers and sisters this day? It's 
not meant as a condemnation. It is just meant to help us shake up a bit. Because if we don't take care, we become complacent. If we are not careful, we take on a religiosity, a religious spirit. And we think that by coming in and out into this place, that is all. No, no. Go ye, go ye into the world. Go to the highways and the byways and bring them all in. Bring them in. Anybody who used to be part of this place and is not a part of this place, reach out to them. Speak to them. Ask them, what is going on? Sometimes it's just offense. Somebody said something and they didn't like it. And instead of them coming out and saying, I'm sorry, I didn't appreciate what was said, they left the house of God broken, bitter, wounded, and nobody reached out to them. Oh, I have decided to follow Jesus. They are all out there. They are wounded. They are broken. Because they don't, they are not a part of the world anymore. They are in no man's land. They are not happy out there and they can't come in here. Wouldn't it be wonderful if those in here went and held one hand and said, I love you. My sister, I have missed you. We don't know what is happening. We want you back. What went wrong? If it means apology, apologize. Amen. It, it, it doesn't make you any, any weaker. This world glories in people who never say sorry. This is the world that we live in. They never say sorry. They don't say please. They don't say sorry. That's the world we live in. But if the Holy Spirit lives in you, he will tap at your heart. He will fill you with compassion and with mercy. And you will not be ashamed to reach out. If even the people you reach out to will not come immediately, who is to say that God is not using you to sow a seed in their lives? That is all it may take. That is all it may take on that day, on that wonderful day, on that glorious day, when the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords arrives and we come before him. That is our trophy. That is our crown. It's that sister, that brother that you snatched back from the world. It's that broken widow that you brought back into the house of God. I saw what he's waiting for. I was hungry and you gave me to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me to drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was in prison and visited me. I was naked and you gave me something to for the 
people of God. 